this bad, you know.
got nothing to do with the First Amendment. It is about the fact that I do think we as Americans, as people, need to honor differences of opinion. The engineer who's been identified by American media as James Damore has been fired from the internet giant. This after he wrote an internal document asserting that there were biological reasons why men and women weren't equally represented. They effectively have uh, fired somebody for dissenting from the uh, group consensus uh, while using facts and logic to make his position. Yes, the USA heralds itself as the land of the free and the home of the brave. But on certain college campuses in Silicon Valley and in other parts of the country, there's an atmosphere brewing where if you have the wrong political opinions or cultural views, there could be very harsh consequences. What subversion is? Basically, it consists of four periods, time-wise. If we start from here and go this way, time, right? This is the beginning point. The first stage of subversion is the process which is called, basically, demoralization. It says for itself what it is. And we believe that sexism, racism, homophobia, and bigotry have no place in this country. Damore told CBS News that before he was fired, he complained to the National Labor Relations Board that Google was trying to silence him. This is a this is a quite a um, interesting and kind of quick development in our culture and now in sport. The moment you, you bring a country to the point of almost total demoralization, when nothing works anymore, when you are not sure whether it is right or, or wrong, good and bad, but there's no division between evil and good. We're afloat in this culture of confusion. If identity is not necessarily reality. What a person identifies as doesn't make it a fact. But how do we get here? How do we arrive at a place where, where truth is not as important as personal preferences, even when we acknowledge it exists? Are people not happier these days, as one writer puts it, to live in worlds built out of our own facts? What if there was a place where the unthinkable didn't happen, and life could continue for progressive Americans just as before? Now there is. Welcome to The Bubble. The Bubble is a planned community of like-minded free thinkers. And no one else. However, when I read the memo, look, even if you disagree with every single point he made, I felt he made his points in a logical, calm, and rational The next step is destabilization. Again, this word says for itself what it is. To destabilize all the relations, all the accepted institutions and organizations in a country. But what makes this summer program unique is the campers it serves. Transgender children, some as young as four years old. It's a place where they can use the pronoun of their choice. But these few people who I think have lost their true identity are breaking up the truth for the rest of us. It's a very big threat to our culture. My question for you is this. Has that agreement actually come in our day? Are you agreeing with everybody? Do you see the world agreeing with everybody? 
hardly speaking. What it's led to are a couple of things that I want to point out to you. This post-truth mindset that elevates preferences over truth has led to a couple of things. It has not led to autonomy and liberation. It's led to chaos. The first thing it's led to is a sense of anger and vilification. 10, 15, 20 years ago, we would, we would, be, we would be angry and say, why, why, why so much hatred? Today we are not. We say, well, commonplace. It's what I call the Hitlerization of social commentary. If you don't agree with me, you're Hitler. That's happened now, hasn't it? And I don't mean if you disagree with me, I mean if you don't agree with me, even as if a lack of assent. If you're... Particularly at a company like Google, which basically controls our information flow, these guys, for these guys to start basically saying this is acceptable, this is not acceptable, is really quite dangerous. I love that line about because he was walking around as a man, no one even noticed he was pregnant. That yeah. they just thought he had a beer belly. The beer, the beer belly, beer belly. That's right. And sharing it on social media so that everybody can understand and learn a little bit more about it is great. Like a virus taking over a computer. The mind that writes the sentence, transgender man gives birth to a boy, has been completely corrupted by political pressure. They actively include themselves in a political process. All of a sudden we see a homosexual. Fifteen years ago he did his dirty job and nobody cared. Now he makes it a political issue. The law of the jungle, not the law of civilization. When, when the legitimate bodies of power, the social structure collapse, it's, it cannot function anymore. Underestimated outcomes that have divided the world. So it recognizes, in distinction to postmodernism, it recognizes that truth actually exists. It just elevates preferences over it. Truth exists, we kind of don't care, as long as we get what we want. And there are those, the men of steel and the women of steel, who want to tell you that their voices can get you what you want. And they're the ones who say, we have the answers. But all of this is leading to a culture of confusion. Law and order now also is uh, pushed into the area where previously people settled their differences uh, peacefully and legitimately. Now, we cannot solve our problems anymore. The society at large becomes more and more antagonistic between individuals, between groups of individuals and the society at large. It reminds me of the song that was so um, popular in the 80s when I was growing up, which dates me terribly, but a song called The Land of Confusion by the band Genesis. Remember what the words were? Oh, Superman, where are you now? When everything's gone wrong somehow, these men of steel, these men of power, are losing control by the hour. Does that not describe today? Could that song not be written yesterday? So therefore, the population at large is looking for a savior, some strong man, strong government, a leader, a savior is needed. This nation was founded by men of many nations and backgrounds. It was founded on the principle that all men are created equal. Equality, mind you. President Kennedy once said, people, we will make America to believe that people are born equal. Are people born equal? Is there any mentioning in the Bible that is not a single word about equality? Just the opposite. You cannot legislate equality if you want to be equal. You have to be equal. You have to deserve it. And yet we build our society on the principle of equality. We say people are equal. We know it is false. It's a lie.
Material values are good, but it's not the prime function of human being. Because you have to live with something. Obviously, the design for our life is not to consume more deodorants. <laughs> there must be something greater. If such a complicated instrument as human body was created, obviously there must be some higher purpose for that. Do, do any one of you here think that what we're seeing has been um, detrimental to society as a whole? Well, I think the loss, I, I mean, if you start to disagree about no. how, to estab how to see truth and how to establish it and agree what it is, then I think you're in some danger. We recognize truth but subordinate it to preference because we have sacrificed truth and clarity on the altar of human autonomy. I'm a law unto myself. I get to decide what's right and wrong for myself and you get to do the same thing. The problem is when we collide. I'm a law unto myself and you're a law unto yourself because we're so autonomous there's going to come a time when my set of values is going to collide with your set of values. But truth is under a lot of attack. Mika, you wanted to say something, please do. Well, how do you define truth? When we remove the boundaries, remove the fences, we lose that sense of purpose and we lose that true freedom. Have you ever met a person who would sacrifice his life, freedom, for the truth like that? This is truth. I never met a person who said, this is truth and I'm ready to shoot me. <laughs> to defend the truth. The Bible is not against your freedom. It's very much in favor of it. It doesn't want you to result in chaos. And Jesus claims to be the true source of that freedom. And he makes a statement It's pretty interesting. He says, freedom is inextricably intertwined with truth. Something which is not material moves society and helps it to survive. Now, the culture says that preferences over truth leads to autonomy. The Bible points out that autonomy over truth leads to chaos. But Jesus says that he is the embodiment of truth and he sets you free. And the other way around. The moment we turn into two by two is four and make it the guiding principle of our life, our existence, we die. Even though this is true and this we cannot prove. We only can feel and have faith in it. So the answer to ideological subversion, strangely enough, is very simple. You simply have to have faith. He doesn't tell you. See, Jesus is not a post-truth man. A post-truth man will tell you what you prefer to hear, not what's actually true. Jesus tells you what is true, not what you want to hear. He's not trying to sell you something. He's trying to tell you like it is. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places.